Dr. Doug Lucas here, retired orthopedic surgeon, now dedicating my practice to longevity and bone health. Have you been diagnosed with osteoporosis or osteopenia and you've been told that you should no longer lift anything more than this? What if I told you that the research supported the idea that maybe you should be lifting something like this? Well, stick around because we're going to go through some of this research. We'll talk about how you can help to figure out what is best for you in your own journey in your bone health. Okay, so if you've been diagnosed with osteoporosis and you are trying to figure out what is the right exercise, just like so many things in the world of bone health, there is a lot of disagreement um, and there's a lot of confusion. So I'm gonna help to sort this out based on the research that I have looked up for my patients, based on the protocols that we have developed for our own patients that are working on their own bone health journey. So here's what you need to remember and think about when you hear and see recommendations for bone health. If you go to any general information source, so this could be the internet, a book, a webinar, this could be a, a podcast, whatever it is, they're generally gonna be making recommendations for the group of people with osteoporosis as a whole. Now that's good because they're hopefully looking at things that are specific to bone health, but it's bad because the group of people that have osteoporosis includes both men and women. It includes both young men and women, and it includes some relatively frail and elder. Uh, men and women, and the problem is, is there isn't one recommendation that should be made for both of those groups. So you really have to understand where you are in the beginning of this. So you can imagine if you are a 50 year old woman who just got diagnosed with osteoporosis, and you're getting the same recommendations as a 95 year old woman who has had multiple spine fractures and a hip fracture because of osteoporosis that was never treated or caught appropriately, uh, the recommendations really should not be the same for both of you in both of those scenarios. So we really need to look at what is appropriate for each person, but most importantly, what I wanna get through in this video is I want you to understand that you don't necessarily need to avoid what I would consider heavy exercise or high intensity exercise because you have osteoporosis. You have to understand your starting point, but at the same time, you have to understand what exercise is best to reverse and improve osteoporosis and improve your bone health. So if you're curious as to whether or not you have osteoporosis or what your bone quality is really like, please watch our video on imaging for osteoporosis. But the short version of it here is osteoporosis is diagnosed based off of DEXA. It gives you what's called a T as in Tom score. Anything less than negative 2.5 is gonna qualify you for osteoporosis. The actual um, bone quality, you generally don't get from a DEXA scan and you have to use some other type of modality. Uh, that can be a DEXA with TBS or it could be a REMS from Echolite, which is an ultrasound study. Um, that can give you a better sense of what your bone quality is like. Uh, some centers are actually using CT for this as well. But if you have one of those tests, then you can get a sense of whether or not you have improved bone quality or not. Either way, you need to know what your starting point is, and then you really do need to work with a professional that can give you some specific recommendations. Now, as I go through this, I want to point out to my own personal history, which is, if I were to take the recommendations of patients with osteopenia and osteoporosis, I would be told not to lift heavy weights. Now, for me, this is something that I think is absolutely ridiculous because yes, my T-score is less than negative one, which means that I do have osteopenia and I have my entire adult life, but my bone quality is very good and my risk of fracture is extremely low. So I lift relatively heavy and I think that it's important that I don't listen to the doctors that say, oh my gosh, you have osteopenia, you shouldn't lift more than five or 10 pounds. You know, don't get into a twisted position. I think we really have to get, take it into context of you know, me as an athlete versus somebody who might be more frail and understanding what my starting point is. All right, now the first piece of evidence I want to present to you is what's called the LIFTMORE trial, L-I-F-T-M-O-R-E. So this is a 2017 publication, and what I love about this study is that they really went the extra step and did what I would consider true high-intensity resistance and impact training. And they compared this uh, in a randomized way to a control group. So let me explain what that means. So a high intensity resistance and impact training, they took patients and the average age was 65 years old, between 60 and 70 years old. They had a diagnosis of osteopenia or osteoporosis. So they had to have the diagnosis based off of DEXA. And then they split them into two groups. There were 110 people overall. 
And in the high intensity group, they did exercises 30 minutes a day, twice a week. Now what they did in the study, which was really interesting, is that they included four exercises. So the four exercises that I, I was surprised that they chose would be deadlift, overhead press, a back squat, and uh, what is called a jumping chin up with drop landing a jumping chin up with drop landing. So let me just describe all those to you if you guys aren't familiar with weightlifting terms. So a deadlift, you're actually lifting, you're bending forward, you're lifting all the way up from a, a completely bent over position, which a lot of people with osteoporosis are told not to do, right? The next one would be the overhead press. So, you know, overhead all the way up, straight arms over your, over your shoulders. Um, and so I think a lot of people would worry about, you know, oh, is that gonna hurt my back? Am I gonna have a fracture of my spine when I do that? Um, and then a back squat. So a back squat, you have a bar across your back, you're holding it back here, and you're going, I would assume they would have them go all the way down into a back squat. And again, putting quite a bit of pressure on the back, um, but also loading the hips. And then this jumping chin up with a drop landing. So the way they describe this is they would have the, uh, they would have the participants jump up to a bar and they would grab the bar with bent elbows and bent shoulders. And they would go up as high as they can and then they would let go and they would impact as hard as they were comfortable onto the ground. And they would do this uh, five repetitions at what I think is also interesting at 80 to 85 percent of one rep max. So again, if you're not experienced in weightlifting, let me explain that. So one rep max is the amount of weight that you can do, the maximum amount of weight you can do in one rep. Now having a bunch of patients with osteoporosis figure out what their one rep max is by itself is impressive. And then having them lift within 85% of that is definitely, I would qualify as high intensity resistance training. So th this is truly a high intensity resistance training protocol. And I love the impact side of it too, because they're really just trying to, to load the bones, to load the muscles in a dynamic way. So in the control group, they did four exercises as well. These were considered low impact exercises and they included uh, standing raises, a calf raise, a shrug, and a lunge. They did them either with body weight or up to a three kilogram uh, dumbbell, is how they described it, it's about six pounds. Um, and they did that over the course of the eight months of the program. They also combined this then with walking uh, or some kind of a warm up and some kind of a cool down to get that 30 minutes in. So you compare then the control group to the um, high intensity resistance and impact training group, and then you see what happened and they measured DEXA in the lumbar spine and the femoral neck. So how did they do? Well, in the spine, the um, high intensity resistance and impact training group went up by almost 3% in the course of eight months, which is actually pretty good in the most I've seen in an exercise study. The control group went down by over 1%, so 1.2% in the course of eight months. So significant improvement in the spine. The uh, femoral neck, which is the hip, was pretty good too. So they went up by 2.6% in the high intensity group and they went down by over 2% in the control group. So again, a pretty big difference between the two groups favoring the high impact training group. So you might be thinking that maybe a lot of people dropped out of the high intensity group and actually there was better adherence to the high intensity group than the control group. There was one injury, there were no fractures, and the injury as described was a back spasm and that participant missed out on two of 70 training events. So they were injured for a short period of time and were able to continue on. So really good adherence, really in both groups. So this is my favorite study about exercise and osteoporosis because what it shows is that not only could these patients lift heavy, what I would consider arguably heavy, and not get injured, not have a fracture, but it had a, the biggest impact I've seen in an exercise study on osteoporosis. So we all have to understand, you know, where are we in this as our starting point? What is our next step uh, in exercise for osteoporosis? But we really shouldn't shy away from lifting heavy if we're able to. Hey, sorry to interrupt. If you're enjoying this content, please like, subscribe, and sign up for notifications so we can send you a notification when we post new content on osteoporosis and longevity. If you know anybody that would benefit from this information, please share this with them so we can continue to get the word out about how to best manage bone health. And lastly, if you wanna learn how we manage osteoporosis in our own clinic, or if you wanna learn other tricks and tools that you can potentially do on your own, please sign up for the masterclass with the link in the description below. All right, so now we're through with my favorite study on exercise and osteoporosis. And a lot of you might be thinking, but what about yoga? What about Pilates? I've heard that they're amazing for bone health. And I wanna reassure you that they are good for bone health and there are abundant studies on both yoga and Pilates 
for osteoporosis. So if you are a big fan of yoga and Pilates, great, you are in the right place. But let me be clear, of all of the studies on both of those modalities of exercise, they don't actually show significant improvement in bone quantity through DEXA. So while the control studies do show that it's better than doing nothing or it's better than a control group that isn't doing yoga and Pilates because they are going to reliably lose bone, it really is a pretty net neutral effect of the exercise of yoga and Pilates on bone health. So some of you might be wondering about aerobic exercise for osteoporosis. I can tell you that in general, the more we shift towards aerobic exercise, the less benefit you're gonna see from a bone health perspective. The reason for that is that in an aerobic um, scenario, you're doing kind of the same movement over and over again, right? So if you're walking, it is a very repetitive motion you're doing uh, very consistently and your body is very efficient at it. Um, not a lot of people running uh, generally in my osteoporosis and bone health group. If you are running, it's better than walking but the impact, because it is so consistently the same, is still not going to have a significant impact on your bone health. Cycling has actually been shown to be associated with osteoporosis, so there's no impact with cycling, and the aerobic benefit really doesn't seem to outweigh that. So when you put that all together, you have to come to the understanding that aerobic fitness really isn't that great for bone health. But when you look at aerobic fitness through the lens of longevity, what you can see is that it has a strong association with longevity. So I don't think you should ignore aerobic fitness, but it has to be combined in conjunction with other things in order to really have a strong impact on your bones. All right, so what's the perfect exercise plan for bone health? Well, it includes actually probably a variety of things. I think that if you have the capacity to, it really should start with relatively heavy resistance training. Now, the number one rule I have for my patients is don't get hurt. So you really have to understand your starting point. You have to understand what your capacity is. And I would strongly encourage you to work with somebody in person to look at the uh, position that you're getting into with your body. Um, you know, are you putting stress in your body in ways that you're not necessarily recognizing otherwise? And that's difficult to do, certainly with yourself, and it can be difficult to do through a telehealth platform too. So having somebody in person is really, really helpful. Um, once you know that you're in a safe zone, really push it as far as you are comfortable doing, and again, making resistance the, the key component of that. The next most important thing, I think, are the muscle exercises that are gonna help with balance, control, and ultimately these are gonna help prevent falls as we age. So this is where I really think that yoga and Pilates come in. Um, yoga in particular, really good for mobility, so there's certainly some value there, but both yoga and Pilates are going to allow you to build muscle strength in what some would consider awkward positions. And so you are going to teach your body to be able to be strong in positions other than the strength that you're gaining through, let's call it a, a, a back squat or a deadlift, but in these sort of kind of more awkward positions, some are more functional. Um, and then in those positions, you're gonna have the strength and the um, ability, the agility to avoid falls. So you're gonna be able to prevent yourself from hitting the ground. So then the last little bit of this, I think should be the aerobic side. Depending on your metabolic health, depending on your goals from a longevity perspective and your starting point, some people may need to do more of this than others. But this really should be the last part that you're putting into your schedule because it's gonna have the least impact on your bone health. And I think that you should consider this from a longevity perspective. But again, we have to understand what your goals are to really make those recommendations. Okay, so I hope you found that helpful. Uh, the summary here is resistance training is king, impact training if you have the right form and you're working with somebody, um, and then adding on some additional muscular agility balance training with yoga and Pilates, and then finally cardiovascular fitness uh, for the icing on the cake. If you can put all those into a formula and you can do that on a regular basis, I do think you will see improvement in your bone health over time. Awesome, so thank you for making it to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed this content. If you did, please like, subscribe, and sign up for notifications so we can let you know when we have new content available. If you know anybody that would like this type of material, please share it with them. The more people that we share this with, the more people will be driven to this channel so that they can learn about osteoporosis. If you wanna learn how we manage osteoporosis or some other tricks and tools that you can use on your own, please sign up for the masterclass in the description below. 
And lastly, we want to hear from you. We love comments. We love questions. We'll answer them as they come in. If you have thoughts on other topics that you would like to see on this platform, please let us know and we'll get to them as soon as we can. Thanks so much for making it to the end of the video.